All right, so we're going to look at the double pendulum and how it exhibits chaotic behavior. All right, so the first thing we're going to do is draw our diagram. We have uh, two masses, so mass 1 is the uh, distance r1 and an angle theta 1 from the negative vertical, and then mass 2 is an angle theta 2 from the negative vertical, um, and the distance r2 from mass 1. All right, so we're actually going to solve this in two different ways. The first is going to be using Newton's laws. Uh, so here we have a free body diagram for mass 1. So we have the force of tension in the first bar, force of tension in the second bar, and also the force of gravity. Uh, below you see the net force on mass 1 in the x direction and the net force on mass 1 in the y direction. Uh, doing the same thing for mass 2, drawing a free body diagram again, um, we get the corresponding equations on uh, x and y directions for mass 2. All right, so now to solve these equations, we're going to take the orange underlined uh, stuff in the right side and solve for that and plug it into the left, and same for the purple underlined and so plug it into the left. Um, we get what you see, the uh, what I just wrote down, and also right there. Uh, to equate these, we're going to multiply the first one by cosine theta 1 and the second one by sine theta 1. Um, then they're equal to each other, and we can uh, take out the force of tension, and we get one... Uh, differential equation there. Um, then doing the same thing uh, for, with just the equation on the right hand side, um, we can equate them and get a second differential equation um, that we can then solve. Alright, so here are our, uh, our two differential equations. You'll notice we still have x's and y's and their derivatives in there, uh, so we're going to calculate those in terms of r1, r2, and theta1, and theta2. Also for uh, x2 double dot and y2 double dot, which I'm about to write down, um, I get a little bit lazy, so I write them in terms of x1 double dot and y1 double dot. All right, so what we're going to do now is take our four values here and plug them into our differential equations. Um, I'm actually not going to do it because if you haven't realized yet, this is an absolutely terrible way to solve this problem. Um, so I'm just going to leave it there because we will get to this same point much more quickly uh, using the Lagrangian method. All right, so we're going to find our kinetic and potential energies in terms of x and y and their derivatives. Um, we are then going to uh, substitute in uh, for those values with what we found earlier in terms of r and theta. And then taking the, the Lagrangian, it's just uh, t minus u, and then the Euler-Lagrange equations on our generalized coordinates, theta 1 and theta 2, um, yield what you see right here. All right, and then to solve these two differential equations, I will not do it by hand because it's impossible, so I will numerically solve them using Mathematica. All right, so here are the positions, velocities, and energies that we just found, uh, and then solving the Euler-Lagrange equations, uh, which is what I did by, uh, that I wrote down a second ago, is what I just highlighted there. Since we have to numerically solve it, I'm going to give it some initial conditions. Um, I'll come back to this in a second. But uh, the initial angular speed of um, mass 2 is 3 uh, radians per second. So um, numerically solving it uh, for theta 1, theta 2, and its derivatives, um, we get um, some values, and I'm going to skip that for right now. But this is what the system looks like. So the first mass uh, starts vertically upward, um, and the point of rotation is at the origin. And then the second mass starts vertically downward, and it's kicked to the right with... Uh, uh, essentially three radians per second. Alright, so this is just a little clip of what the chaotic behavior looks like um, for the given initial conditions. Um, I'll show this more in a second, but the uh, behavior is very, very different even for a slightly different um, initial uh, velocity for the second mass. Alright, so it's also kind of cool to look at the paths that each of the masses trace out as time goes on. Uh, so the red is the first mass and blue is the second mass. Uh, you can see my computer is kind of freaking out, so I'm going to pause it um, and then just show you some still images. All right, so um, right here we have a plot of what is traced out over the first 100 seconds. Um, and then right here is a plot of what's traced out over the first 490 seconds. And you can see that this one fills in much more area. Um, actually, if we give it enough time, it will fill in all of the area that is accessible to it. Uh, before I say anything about this, I uh, accidentally switched uh, theta and t on this plot, so just switch them back so it makes sense. Um, 
this is not a way to prove that the system's chaotic, it's just a nice way to visualize um, the fact that slightly different initial conditions give drastically different behaviors. So for uh, theta 2 dot equal to 3, equal to 3.001 and 3.002, you can see that theta 2 behaves very, very differently. It's also kind of interesting to look at the parametric plots um, from the different initial conditions, and you can just see that it traces out different paths as a function of time. So now to actually prove that the double pendulum is a chaotic system, we're going to uh, take theta 2 dot equal to 3 and also equal to 3.001. Um, and then take the difference between the angles of mass 1 in each of those and the difference between the angles of mass 2 in each of those. Uh, so that's what delta theta 1 and delta theta 2 are. Um, and then taking the logarithm of each of those and plotting them as a function of time helps to show uh, if the system is chaotic. So if you look at the uh, plot I'm showing right now, you'll see that um, the log of delta theta 1 and the log of delta theta 2 both increase as a function of time. Uh, this just means that the angle uh, difference of theta 1 for the two different initial conditions and the angle difference for theta 2 between the two initial conditions, um, the difference gets bigger and bigger as time goes on, showing that the systems are very, very different uh, just based on a thousandth of a rating per second difference in initial conditions.